What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel or hello if you are new here. Today, I'm gonna be doing the To All The Boys I've Loved Before review. I've never seen you so happy. Now, if you didn't know, I've already done a full like reaction commentary track. You can go and watch it. There'll be a link at the end of the video and in the description. Um, basically in that video, I just react to it and you can watch the movie with me if you would like to. Today, we're gonna be going into it and talking about the film and my thoughts on it, how it compared to the book, the, the, the book and all of that. So later on in the video, there will be spoilers, but for now, it's gonna be pretty spoiler free. So if you just wanna know whether you should watch the movie or not, um, stick around because I have a lot to say about it that doesn't contain spoilers. So yeah, I'll let you know when the spoilers are coming. So as a film, as a whole film, I really enjoyed it and I really loved the way it was structured out. I think the film had a really nice like flow to it in the rom-com category. Category. I think that it sort of reinvented what teen rom-coms were in my opinion I think one of my favorite parts about the film was like the overall like flow of it and um, it kept me interested throughout the entire thing I think there's been some films especially from Netflix where it's just so uninteresting like it's so like hard to watch and I usually end up not watching it or skipping parts or blah 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 but in this Netflix original I think that it had a nice speed and tone to the whole film that definitely kept you interested throughout it. And not to mention the plot's just really interesting too. It's a new take on rom-coms, it's reinventing the rom-com category and I'm really just living for that. I've watched a lot of Netflix films and one thing is that Netflix makes beautifully shot films. I think that's one of the best things about Netflix is that everything's shot with super high quality and they take a lot of time in the production value of things but sometimes the writing does not match the quality of a film. Yeah there's cool scenery shots and you know the coloring's really dope and the editing's nice but then it's like the writing and the plot is complete garbage but I finally found a film where the quality of the production matches the quality of the writing and it complemented each other really, really well. So without spoiling it and trying to tell you how I thought compared to the book, I think it actually compared really well. Obviously they took out some stuff and they added different things. For me, when I see book adaptation films, it doesn't really matter to me if it's spot on. That's never really been something that I get super angry about. I always think of the film as its own story in a sense, but I think it did the book justice. I think it included the parts that made the book what it is, but I think the changes they made really made it fit today's society almost and the world we live in now because the book was written in 2011 or something it was written in like 2011 and obviously things have changed since then so i love the little changes they made that kind of made it fit for 2018 specifically the cast did a fantastic job. I thought Lana and Noah's chemistry was absolutely amazing. I think they really connected with each other and had a good dynamic throughout the film. The thing is their chemistry had to be spot on because, you know, these two characters, like it just, it just had to be spot on. I feel like Lana and Noah already have sort of similar personalities to Peter and Laura Jean that it all ended up working really well. But not even just their chemistry, I think the actual like side characters and uh, everyone else in the cast did a really good job at portraying their roles too. One of my favorite characters was Lucas. I don't feel like a lot of people are talking about Lucas because I know he's not like super high up role, but I always really liked him in the book and I always really liked when him and Lara Jean would have scenes together because I really loved their friendship. I think the actor that played Lucas did a really good job. I'll get more into characters later. Before I get into spoilers and the scenes that I liked and individual characters and all that stuff, I'm gonna talk about kind of what this film meant. To have an Asian American in a lead role in a rom-com is like really special. And not only just to be the lead, but for Asian to not be the whole plot because 
I feel like whenever there's an Asian lead in something or Asian character, all they are is Asian. They don't have a personality aside from that and that's, that's it. Now, there's times where that can be great and it can be really good to bring awareness to, you know, how Asian Americans live and all that. Say in Crazy Rich Asians, it's literally all about, you know, the Asian American life. I think for young Asian Americans, it's important to just see someone like you without their whole story being surrounded around their race. For me, it was the first time I've ever seen someone so like me in a film that I could truly relate to. And I feel like one of the reasons why I related to her so much, obviously is because of the race, but just her personality in general. A lot of young Asian girls have grown up basically without themselves being represented. And anytime they are represented, it kind of just comes and bites you in the ass really because then that one representation is what everyone identifies you as it's not always the case but a lot of times when there's like one asian in the spotlight it's great but at the same time like for everyone around you that's like all they see you as they see you as that one asian so say for me what's her name brenda song on disney channel i loved her but then growing up that's all you are to people you're just writing the song you know it's not an insult it's not a bad thing but it's hard to only be seen as one thing from people almost for them to have an expectation of you before they even get to know you anytime we see representation of ourselves it's always like to the extreme of like sci-fi or action star or something like that it's never really been in this romantic sense and I'm so happy that it finally is because it's important that young Asian girls can see that, you know, they can be the love interest too. And I'm kind of just going on like this ramble about it, but I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because I think it's extremely important because it was important for me to see a character that I related to, to so much and someone that also looked like me meant a lot. Okay, moving on to spoiler parts and scenes that I liked and characters that I wanted to talk about. So if you haven't seen the movie, go watch the movie because this is where it's gonna get spoilery. Laura Jean's relatability was one of the best parts about the film. You really felt you could connect with her through this film, just like you did in the book. In the book, I felt so connected with her. And then in the film, I also felt like this connection. <laughs> I'm joking. I also felt this connection with her in the movie. Peter Kavinsky, I, I just, I liked it. I think that in the book, he kind of like, I don't know, I feel like in the book he was a little bit less likable, which sounds bad, but I feel like just in the film, he had this like charm and essence to him that was really just, it was just working. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just working. And uh, he was like likable in the books, but like also like in some parts I was like, whoa, what are you doing? Like, what's happening? I think in the book, why he was a little bit less likable is because he was like really caught up on Jen in the book, which I feel like in the movie he wasn't. Like, he was, but like not as much. You know what I'm saying? Like, and in the movie, he wasn't late to pick her up or they didn't like emphasize that he was late to pick her up or anything. So that in the book really annoyed me when he was like always late. Cause I was like, that's just like rude. Like stop doing that, you know? But yeah, I really liked his charm. It really made me fall in love with Peter Kavinsky even more. You know what I'm saying? Josh's shift from the book. Everybody liked Josh in the movie so much more than they liked him in the book. I think one of the reasons why they liked him more in the movie was because he didn't confess and didn't kiss Lara Jean. He's kind of like really annoying in the book and kind of is very like woe is me all the time and like you couldn't sympathize with him in the book because I was like, dude, shut it. But in the movie, I think you could sympathize with him a little bit more. I think why I liked Josh more in the movie was also even after Lara Jean like kind of cut him off and kind of cut him out of her life, he was still there to talk to her when she needed him to and he was the one that talked to her before she like goes off to peter it was very much like a besties you know like i feel like they're just like best friends and i i liked that genevieve genevieve white devil i was just you know amazed by how unlikable she was <laughs> like the actress did an amazing job at just being unlikable in the movie like she just really gave that like evil like tang to Genevieve and I think it just worked really well. I think in the 
book, she was a little bit more like subtle about it all. Not that subtle, but like a little bit more subtle. But like in the movie, like she was a little freaking, like I said, white devil. Like she was just not, no, like she, it's a no for me. I've always had some sort type of opinion on Margot. Um, I kept calling her Margaret when I was watching the film. I don't know why. Um, but I've always had some sort of opinion on Margot. Like, I like her, but I don't. And I understand her, but I don't. It's always been kind of this love-hate relationship with Margot. I think that she has some really good qualities and then some weird ones that I just can't, can't relate to, you know? <laughs> like, but I understand why she's like that, how she's very protective and very, almost, not controlling, but a little bit more, like, strict than everyone else because she kind of had to be like the mom and have more responsibilities um sooner than she should have and then like i understand why she did that to josh but then it's also like oh that's like, really mean but it's like oh but i was like i understand why you did it but it's also like oh like talking about my favorite scenes from the film let's talk about any Covency kiss i don't even know how you say their ship name because it just sounds like peter's last name kovinsky 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 Sounds the same to me. Anyways, any Largine and Peter kiss, loved it. Their chemistry, like I said, was amazing. So when they kissed, it was just, it just worked. I like their second kiss a lot on the lacrosse field. It was just, it just was funny because she was like, let's do this. And then he just didn't say anything and had this like smirk on his face and then just like smooched her. And I was like, boy, why are you so loud? Like, what? Like, what the fuck? And I was just like, in, in the middle of practice, like, wow, he's really bold, he's really out there doing that. And his face, when when Laura's making the freaking contract, and then she's like, no kissing, he's like, he looks so freaking sad. I was like, boy, this ain't no fake relationship, if you know what I mean. The two serious talks that Laura Jean and Peter had in the diner and then at his house I think those two talks were really important because it showed that they had a lot to relate to each other with with you know Peter's dad leaving and then Laura Jean's mom dying I think the way that they handled Laura Jean's mom in this was really good they included it in a way that was really well done in my opinion I think it just worked well they didn't try to like force it into like random scenes like my mom died <laughs> i feel like there's a lot of times where people like have like a parent death in a movie and then all of a sudden they like, just like blurt it out sometimes and it, like doesn't work with the scenes but when they were talking about it i think it went really well because she explains why she's afraid of letting people into her life and caring about too many people because you know they could leave or you know something could happen to them like her mom and then she also explains in the diner like you know love and reading about love is cool and it's interesting and it's fascinating but like the actual real thing is really scary commitment is scary and blah 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 and i think that's really like i really felt that you know what i'm saying like it, it was really it was really well worded and well spoken you know what i'm saying and that whole diner scene where then he's like oh you say you're afraid of commitment but like you signed a contract to like date me and then she's like what's because we're pretending and then he's like he, he th looks like he's about to freaking burn down the whole building he looks so mad he was like <laughs> wow large jeans so honest i was like dude you can't just like do that you can't just like switch your you know attitude <laughs> like that was so weird it was literally just like oh well large jeans just so honest the most honest of them all i was like damn like Calm down. Like, it's been a month. Chill out. Like, what are you doing? The second, like, serious talk they had at his house was also one of my favorites. I think it just, it had this sincerity to it. And then, like, Noah and Lana's acting in it was also really good. So, I don't know. I feel like those, like, deep talks that they had and serious, like, things, like, it was genuine and, like, it was very sincere while watching it. So I enjoyed that. Also, I thought they were about to freaking kiss the whole when they were at Peter's house and like at the end where they're just like looking at each other and they're just like having some eye contact and I was like, are they gonna kiss? Because like, that's crazy, but they didn't, so. Obviously, I loved the party scene. I think it was so good. I think it was just, it was really fun seeing them at the party, you know, the part where he takes out her scrunchie and then he's wearing her scrunchie and it's just like on his wrist like all the time. But like, 
It was so like annoying when Jen just like took it off of his wrist and he was just like, hey, don't take that. Come on, give it back. Like not even trying to get it back, but I guess like it would, the only way to get it out would be to like yank it out of her hair. Oh, the first Kovinsky fight. I loved that scene and like I didn't love it but I loved it because I love drama. So it all happens, you know, they're on the bleachers, she's underneath the bleachers, she overhears them, blah blah blah, and then she's going to talk to Josh and then he gets really upset that she's talking to Josh and he's like, what the fuck, Covey, what are you doing? <laughs> and then they talk and they have this fight and she's like, let's just, let's just like cut the contract. Like, you know, you're getting back together with Jen and then I'm talking to Josh, like everything's a-okay. Like we can just end this. I mean, she did not say it that chill. She was like a little bit stressed about it, you know, a little bit, a little bit more passion than that, you know? <laughs> I really liked that scene. I just was like, who's gonna tell them it's fake? You know what I'm saying? And it's mostly Peter jabbing out the fact that it's not fake. Cause he does it in the diner and then he does it in this scene too, where he's like, oh, you tell me. And it's like, it's, it's kind of him like poking the bear to see like, it's not fake. You know what I'm saying? And he gets very upset that, you know, she wouldn't go on the ski trip with him. He's like, it's in the contract. You can't just not go on the ski trip with me. She was like, and <laughs> it's just like a really weird thing because in the book like when they're talking about the ski trip It's very like casual and it's very just like oh like come on like blah 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 But in this one it was like how could you just like not go to the ski trip with me like that's so freaking rude Why would you do that? But I loved that fight scene It was very passionate on both sides and I was like damn who's gonna tell both of them that it's not fake <laughs> Someone better say something because I'm gonna jump through this screen and freaking leap into their world and tell them myself. <laughs> ski trip, I I loved because there was tension between them in the ski trip because she didn't sit next to him on the freaking bus and there's tension and she's not hanging out with him and then Lucas tells her to go down and you know go to the hot tub with him la, 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 la. and then the iconic hot tub scene happens and in the hot tub scene before that scene before that scene happens you know they have their talk and they're talking about it and he He's like, I drove across town to get the freaking yogurt you like. And then she's like, what? All the way across town, boy. And then he's like, yeah, why do you think someone would do that? And she's like, oh my God, they must like really, really need that yogurt. Like they really need that freaking dairy, you know? <laughs> and he's like, <sighs> not what I was thinking, but like, it's okay. Like. I guess we're gonna have to be a bit more blunt about, you know, this instead of giving a yogurt analogy onto caring about people, you know, we gotta actually say it. We can't just bring up yogurt and think that Laura Jean will know that we like her, you know? So that's like going through his head or whatever. Um, <laughs> they have all this thing and she like takes off her coat. She goes into the hot tub with her nightgown on and we're all like, woo! She is so bold. Like, she's really out there. Like, what a freaking badass, you know? Like, going into the hot tub with her nightgown on. She's like, I didn't bring a suit. Um, <laughs> and also, for all my peeps uh, that watched my book review about it, there was no person under the water giving him a blowjob. So, you know what? I'm kind of glad it didn't because there was no speculation while watching that there was someone under the water giving him a blowjob, you know? I think that the only way you could speculate that is through the pages, you know? It's just not the same in a movie, you know? It was an overhead shot, you could see the water, there was no one there, you know? Just how, just how it is. That stupid thought can only be thought while reading. That's just how it is, you know? He, she walks over in the hot tub and then he freaking like swoop, he sweeps her up. Like whoosh. And then she's like in his lap and then they're kissing and I was like, what? And he was like, there is no one like you, Kofi. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, and the way like Noah's voice is and it's like a little bit like, Husky or whatever. It was really all like working and I, I thought I was gonna pass out while watching that scene Like that was so just like it was just it was a it was really iconic It was truly amazing and it was everything I needed from the hot tub scene and more You know what I'm saying literally like the definition of a hot steamy makeout, you know <laughs> And then when they get out of the hot tub and they're like he's like walking her back to her dorm and then they have a little kiss he like she's like walking away and then he like pulls her back and i was just like y'all are so loud right now like y'all don't have to be this cute but you are you are being this cute like you didn't have to be that cute but you just are and then she like 
goes on tiptoes and gives them the kiss and then they like walk off and they're just like having some like eye sex like sex with their eyes like looking at each other like that it was a moment of eye contact and i really liked it <laughs> it was a really good scene that one you know what i'm saying and then jen talks to her and that whole thing debacle goes down. She tells her that she has the scrunchie or whatever and that Peter visited her room. Largin gets mad, yells at Peter, says I'd rather walk home than get in the car with you, all that stuff. And then fast forward a little bit more, then he comes over to her house and he talks to her and like all this stuff's happening and when she says it out loud and she's like, I was just second best, I was just fake best and I was like, whoa, <laughs> we like slow down, like no, 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 no. Like, whenever she says that to him and he's just like, no, 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 <laughs> like he's like, no, 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 you were never second best, you were never fake best, no, and then freaking serial killer Josh comes up behind her, and he's just like, she told you to leave, <laughs> and I was like, shut up, Josh, get the fuck out of here, they're all, they're yelling at each other, and then he's like, you still love Josh, and I was like, where did that come from, he literally just swooped up behind her, and like, was like, you better leave, and then Peter, like, got the conclusion that she still liked Josh, which was, like, really weird. Like, I don't know where that correlation came from with, like, hooded guy comes up behind her, and then he's like, you like Josh. What the fuck? <laughs> and then Margo and Kitty are watching, and then Margo gets really upset, and she's like, you love Josh. Uh, where, where? I still don't know why she got upset because then it's like kind of like you dumped him <laughs> like and like what's the big deal like she didn't act on it so it's not like I don't get why she would be that mad when it's like she didn't act on her feelings the letters got sent out by someone else and yeah like I don't get why Margot was so upset but like whatever Peter walks up and he's like you were never second best girl and then like just slides away <laughs> like Largin looks at Josh and then he's like I didn't know she was home and he says it like I don't know why but he sounded like a complete dumbass when he said that he was like I didn't know she was home and I was like okay like. and then all the stuff happens and we have the sister moments which is like really fun you know song girls forever uh. and then I loved the diner scene with her and her dad and I loved the when he talked about her mom I just I really liked it I think it, it was just a good well done scene especially with the picture and the little jukebox or whatever that was next to it and the song everybody wants to rule the world like good song i really loved the relationship they had in the film so kudos to them on that scene because it was pretty dang good and then the talk that josh and lara jean had before she finally goes back to peter i really liked because she kind of explains it all and kind of was like basically telling josh that the feelings she had for him like weren't true like weren't actually like love you know what i'm saying like it was love but not the way she loved peter i think that was a really important scene to see because it showed that like she said she's been in love x amount of times you know she has the letters but like nothing was like how it was with peter after actually being together with him i think that was a really good scene because it kind of explained her sort of feelings and how like it compared so like yeah like i i loved you josh but like it's not the same way i love peter like this is that real shit i don't i don't know she was basically saying i was a fool thinking i liked you like i was a mess so like don't feel flattered because I don't even like you anymore, loser. <laughs> Just kidding. And then the ending scene. I loved the ending scene. I love that she had the note. I love that Peter said, uh, if you want me to have that note, you have to give it to me. I liked that because it made it so she took initiative and it was kind of her in control of the situation on whether she wanted to go through with it or not and tell him or not. I think that was one of the parts I really liked where he was like, you have to give this to me if you want me to see it, you know what I'm saying? And she tells him, she's like, I think I like you, and not in a fake way. And I was like, wow, a true Shakespeare, I, I love that. And then Peter tells her, you know, the only reason why I went to Jen's room that night is because I was telling her it's over, I cut that hoe off. She's not a hoe, she's just mean, okay? She's not a hoe, she's just mean. But he was just like, I told her things were done, like we're over, bitch. And then he was like, because I'm in love with you, Largie. And... <sighs> it was like he was trying to one-up her. Cause <laughs> she was like, I think I like you. And he was like, oh, bet, I, I love you. 
How about that? How about that? I love you. Now what are you gonna say to that? But I thought it was I thought it was great and I I was taken aback and I was just like he really did that. You know what I'm saying? He really did that. <laughs> he really was that bold and that loud with the L word, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then they kiss, and he's like, you gonna break my heart, Covey? And I was like... <sighs> it's insane how much I love them both, and it's insane how whipped I am for both of them, you know? Their love is so pure, they are literally hetero excellence. I can't stand how much I love them, you know what I'm saying? Like, that ending scene ruined me. And then the kiss were so long and it was so freaking, it was, it was a kiss, that's for dang sure. And then they walk off in a lacrosse field together. Like, they walk off into the semi-sunset. I don't know, it wasn't even a sunset. But they walked off together and I was like, give us the sequel. We need the freaking sequel. And the scene of John at the end in the, in the credits, I was like, give us the sequel. We need the damn sequel. Give us the sequel. We deserve the damn sequel, please. Like, I would, I will admit there were some parts that were left out from the book that I would have enjoyed in the film. I would have loved to have the Halloween scene in the film. I would have loved to have the antique furniture shopping in the film and seeing Peter's um, store. Like, I would have loved to seen all that, but like, it's okay that it's not in it because maybe, you know, in the second movie, we'll get those scenes. There's probably a bunch of scenes in the book that weren't included that a lot of people wanted to see, but like, it's okay because the film was still just a great film. Like it still had to all the boys I love for essence. It was still the same story. And I loved it that they changed the ending. The ending they pulled was from the beginning of P.S. I Love You, um, instead of leaving to all the boys I loved before at a cliffhanger like they did in the book. Cause they could have done us dirty by that and just, you know, ending the film with Dear Peter. Like they did in that motherfucking book. <laughs> but they didn't and they had it as a nice closure to it, but also left it like the ending credit scene to hopefully, you know, hint at a sequel. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep seeing the story. I want to keep seeing these characters' story be told because I think they're really interesting and they're worth telling, you know what I'm saying? I know I didn't cover everything. I know this wasn't a good review. I know I'm not good at reviewing. I say that all the time because I don't want people thinking I'm some movie critic when I'm not and I don't know how to review movies. I just like talking about them with you guys. Let me know your thoughts on the film in the comment section down below. Um, let me know your favorite scenes you know, how it compared to the book. I wanna know all your thoughts, so like, let me know, you know what I'm saying? Let's keep watching To All The Boys I Love Before because I really want a sequel, so the only way we're gonna get that sequel is if we keep watching it. So, encourage everyone to watch it like, at least once a day. Like, it's good for your health, it's good for your, you know, mind. So yeah, watch it once a day, and I think you'll gain superpowers, actually. Anyways, peace out, my dudes. Uh, I will see you next time. Here are the end slates. I got this thing for you. If you come closer, I can miss